Hello and welcome to another edition of Inside 50. I'm Troy Luff. And I'm Stephen Lord. Well, the Saints have a chance to play off for a spot in the grand final this weekend after thrashing the Pies by 34 points in their semi-final. Yes, in front of 76,000 people at the MCG, St Kilda just too good. Their champion forward, Nick Rewald, he kicked five. And Nick Del Santo, he was dropped earlier this year, Steve-O. He's put that behind him. He had 32 possessions. Yeah, it was a great game. But really, it was the forward lines that told the story. Efficient versus inefficient. The Saints kicking an incredible 17 goals four, and the Pies are very wasteful, 9-18. Well, it wasn't just the end of Collingwood. A couple of players have decided to hang up the boots. Ryan Loney at just 25, he's giving it away. But also Shane Wakeland, he played 252 games. The 34-year-old, he's had enough. Yeah, and the Saints' Fraser Garrick, he's hung up the boots for the second time, managing only five games this year due to hand arthritis. Well, he played 262 games, the big G train, kicked 549 goals, including 103 in 2004 when he won the Coleman medal. St Kilda and Hawthorne, they come head-to-head -head this Saturday night at the MCG for their first finals bout since 1971. The last time they met in round 16, the Saints were too good for the Hawks. 30-point winners. What are we going to see this time, steve -O? Yeah, look, it was a Saints midfield run which got them home in round 16, and I think they'll need plenty of that again if there's any chance to beat the Hawks. But the week off has been very kind to the Hawks. They've got many people returning, including Trent Crowd, who's likely to take Rewald. Look, he'll be hard to stop Rewald, but Crowd, he's the man for the job. But look, I see it a little bit differently than you. Luke Ball, he's a big chance to return, and the Saints have beaten the Hawks six out of the past seven times, so... It's an upset win for me. It's been 10 years since the Dogs have contested a prelim final and they get the opportunity again this Friday after beating the Swans in their final on the weekend. It was one of the most exciting first halves of football I've seen all year, steve from both these sides. But in the end, the Swans' goal kicking, it really let them down. They missed some crucial shots at goal. Barry Hall, he had a good game, but he also missed some goals. Still kicked four, though. Yeah, it's four goals, still not too bad. But best on ground was Matthew Boyd with over 33 disposals. Fantastic game from him. And the Dogs ran out the game very well, kicking 10 goals to five in the second half. Sydney Swans coach Paul Roos has some very tough decisions to make on some of his ageing players now the season's over. Already the Swans have five players over 30, with many approaching that dreaded 3-0. Now, who do you see being threatened, steve -O? Yeah, look, number one in the gun would have to be Leo Barry, the 2005 Premiership star, whose lack of pace is getting found out week after week. Well, funny you should say that, steve -O, because Leo Barry and Jared Crouch both led the side off the ground on Friday night after they lost the Bulldogs. Maybe this is a sign that they are ready to retire. Could be. They may join Ben Matthews and Peter Spider Everett. Spider, 291 games at three clubs, a superstar of the competition. And that he is. And Ben Matthews, poor guy, misses out on the 200 club by just two games. He got stuck on 198. Now, with a couple of guys already retiring, maybe we might see a couple more. Could open the door for a player like Daniel Kerr to find his way to the Swans. Geelong have lost only once this season and are strong premiership contenders. But coach Mark Thompson is playing down the fact that they are the obvious favourites. So what's your pick, Luffy? The Cats or the Dogs? Well, it's very hard to tip against Geelong this week, steve -O. They are in sensational form. They're going to be without Paul Chapman, though. He's struggling to get over a hamstring injury, but there is no way I will tip against Geelong. No, I think the Cats will be too strong. Interestingly, Ottens actually came out and said there's less pressure on them this year because they won the flag last year, so they can go out and just enjoy playing in the finals. Well, the last time these two sides met in round 16, it was even at half-time. The Bulldogs, they fell to pieces. They lost by 61 points. I see the same thing happening on Friday night. Monday night saw Geelong dominate the All-Australian selections. It wasn't the record nine many people expected, but they still had seven take their place in the side. Yeah, look, hardly surprising, Luffy, after they've dominated the season. But in other big selections, Chris Judd was named captain, and Pavlich has made the side now an amazing six times. And also three players, they got their fourth All-Australian Guernsey. Matthew Scarlett, Dean Cox, and Brent Harvey. There are 11 clubs represented, Steve-O, but the Swans, they were the only team in the top eight not to have a player. And in other news, Brett Delidio, who's just won the Tigers best and fairest, has also won the 2008 AFL Army Award, which is awarded for courage, initiative and teamwork. He won the award for courageously attempting to take a mark while backing back into a pack against the Saints in round seven. He had 27% of the votes. Ryan Gamble, he was runners up. And Gavin Urquhart, he was third with 20%. Yeah, it was a great effort. Now, stay tuned for next week. We also have all the news on the Brownlow and the lead-up to the big grand final.